say, listen, this is not enough, and we can show you that this university and this, in UK, and especially in the United States, they are doing this like PBL, and nothing is here in Heidelberg. Please start. And since there was not so much reflection from the side of the professor, said, okay, if they don't want, then we do it ourselves. The whole <coughs> ourselves, not everybody, of course. And they started, especially in the first semester, to organize some, some PBL cases, which are, let's say, general medicine, how to get into medicine, uh, practical oriented. And they got some counseling, of course. And they trained some uh, to be a tutor, how to, to do it well. And so they, they actually they convinced us by doing itself that it's very important. And then later, we as professors we came to the program. Some denied, didn't want to do it because it's really a change of your habit as a lecturer. And, uh, but then we agreed when we started this curriculum that we have to do it on a broad base. It will be now, from now on, now six, ten years, part of our curriculum. And that's personal. Our days in summer are longer because we have longer daylight. <laughs> no. uh, working to tell you the truth, our, let's say, uh, working hours. Uh, by law, the basic uh, working hours per week are 40 hours. But nobody of us is able to have the work done in 40 hours. So usually, our, if I talk about me and others, we start, the clinicians start very early, shortly after midnight, so at 7 o'clock or so. And then they continue until 6 or 7 o'clock. And then, because they also all do research, and uh, my, my personal schedule is that I usually start at 9 o'clock. I'm privileged in a non-clinical institution, but I usually get home by 8 o'clock. But this, of course, uh, changes sometimes from day to day, and uh, we are free in managing our time. Um, but it is a very important point, because part of the resistance coming from the faculty council and from the lectures was that the workload would be tremendously high with the new program. And indeed, it is much more. But, you know, the years before, many of the professors and lecturers, not only in Heidelberg uh, Medical School, but also in others, who have been involved, we all have three tasks. We do a clinic, we do teaching, and we do research. We get our most credit in our career from research. We get next good credits from our clinical work, or we do services in laboratory dialysis, analysis, and then teaching is the third. And usually, you skip the third. And, you, and so, um, a, a huge amount of budget coming, coming from the state is given to the universities and to the faculty because of teaching. We are not a teaching, we are not a scientific institution like the National Health Institute. And uh, we are not uh, really in a hospital doing the clinics. We are a university, so we are obliged for teaching. And then uh, the dean and we, we started to recalculate because the budget was given together to our chairs, chairs, and they distributed as they wished. So 90% was going to clinic and research, and maybe 10% for teaching. Also, And then we said, listen. The money you get from the state government is actually at least 30% of the budget is going to teach. This accounts for, for example, in one subject you have, uh, let's say, 20, 30 doctor scientists, uh, potential lectures. You see, one third of this, they should do teaching all the 30% of the budget. But since it's not possible, but at least the equivalent of this working hours now we have to ask them. So you can get your money for teaching, one third of your salary, so you have to do your teaching. And if you don't so so, the, the chair of this uh, department doesn't get enough money. They get the reduction of money. And money comes in this world by by uh, uh, 
telling them that if you don't teach well in this new program, you get less budget for the next year. This makes the world go more dry. Yes. But it, uh, it was a hard discussion. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the interesting lecture. Uh, highlighted the uh, curriculum development at uh, Edinburgh University. Actually, as you may know, we, we have five years and six years uh, medical curriculum in Sudan. Mm -hmm. uh, in both cases, uh, the students are graduated. If it is five or six years, they get a MPPAS, a Bachelor of Medicine and Surgery, and then they go into employment. If they get an opportunity of employment, then they, they get a uh, they employ it and then they, they work under the supervision of a senior, senior physician and they go into four disciplines, the surgery, ops and gynecology and uh, pediatric, uh, pediatric and so on, yeah. And then they become uh, a general practitioner. Right. So I say that you have five years and then you have one year practical. Yeah. So please can you go just deeply, it is the same thing, uh, go through all these four disciplines, the practical and how it looks and, and what do you think about our system which is it just graduated the student with five or six years and then they go and yeah. they affect it depends on their employment. Um, actually it's not much <coughs> different from your system. We have six years yeah. and uh, they do all the subjects over the first five years and then they go for an entire year exclusively only to the clinic for all students. Okay. And then they do their practical and their theoretical explanation and then they get the certificate. From this time point on, they are allowed to uh, to work as a doctor, but nobody is doing it because they are not trained enough in practical application. So they all get uh, a specialization, and this specialization, I think it is comparable, like here, takes between four and six years, depending on the subject. And only then they will do another explanation, and then they usually are, let's say, fully equipped uh, medical doctor. <coughs> after the second or third year they are fully integrated in the clinical work and some of them stay in the clinics and some of them or many of them uh, get into private practice uh, office so as general practitioner, a practitioner or in a specialization whatever uh, subject it is involved. All right, thank you very much. I think we will finish at that uh, level. And the other topic is the as you can create them, you know very well that you can give it a lecture of five minutes mm -hmm. or a lecture of five minutes or to supplement it with practicals and so on. Mm -hmm. Perhaps for you to rest and for uh, our audience, you will accept a short talk on TBL mm -hmm. as a philosophy, as a tool, mm -hmm. and the outcome. Mm -hmm. if compared with other things. So I, I know there is one special situation in the field. There is something about TBL. There are others as well. Yes. Okay. So, um, Excuse me, please, just uh, a minute. I suppose you know. Yes, no, 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 you're going to be careful. I'm just taking your uh, permission. The Jama'a, can we stand up? I will tell you the following. Um, maybe you sit down for for one minute to tell you what actually was in my mind, but which, uh, let's say, with respect to the time and the late time of the day, maybe change. We can really do it in ten minutes. This which will just be a discussion, exchange of our experience of those who like, of course. And then I can also give you, uh, let's say, a brief introduction as we do it, and maybe some, some general aspects. Previously, it was planned to have an introduction of about 20 minutes, and then you have an exercise, 
in two groups, but they are very uh, big groups. I don't know if everybody wants to stay. And then we return back and to show you some, in the video clip, some difficult situation how to handle it. What I would probably do as a, let's say, condensed form is that I give you, let's say, just a brief introduction. May I first ask the question, who is doing PBL? Who is doing PBL, not knowing, problem-based learning, not knowing, but doing. Two, three, four, don't be shy. <laughs> so I would say there are probably 10 to 15 percent. Okay, so you will not be bored if I give a general introduction. What is PPL and how do we do it? And then you probably skip the exercise because it would take another half hours. And then, if you like, for those who would like to stay for a couple of more minutes, I have uh, five or six video clips which we made on very difficult situation, and then we can discuss how to handle this difficult situation. Is this okay? No, no, no. Okay. Fine. For the second part, then I need the. This one? Yeah, only. Oh, ah, it's already there. Okay. Good. Well, yeah. Young scientists, oh, they are not so young any longer. We work already since more than 10 years together on the, uh, to, to shape the uh, problem based learning for Heidelberg in the medical curriculum. So and we have this called this, uh, uh, this uh, cool forum so that everybody can connect to us if they have questions. So what we start is uh, that we have this seven or eight jumps or steps which should be really uh, followed during a PBL session. So what is basically PBL? So we start with a problem and of course we need a solution. And this needs to clarify for terms, define the problem, this is not easy. The, the students have a hard time to define the problem if they get, uh, let's say, a case description. They start thinking and giving good uh, solutions or less good solutions, they don't see the problem. Then we have a brainstorming, so everybody can talk and provide what they know already. Then we try to generate a hypothesis. Then we formulate, we define so-called learning goals, and then they have a period of self-directed study. They go home with the task, they, they work on it, and then we agree of a kind of how they present the solution to the group, and then we start over again for a synthesis of everything which we have learned after this presentation, and then, of course, we evaluate within the group if it worked well and what material we have learned over the time. So we start with a problem, of course. So here it's very obvious that you have a problem, how to get this bus away from this creek here. Okay. So the principal setting is very different from the lecture room, as you know. We usually sit in small rooms, and it could even be an office of a professor, where you have a table, and this is the optimal group size. So let's say eight is the most ten, of the students together with one professor or a tutor. And then you see here you have flip charts because you need to write all these ideas which are developed at the time. So this is uh, a cartoon, maybe if somebody knows Snoopy. Snoopy is a dog. Yeah? And so the others say, I have taught Snoopy to whistle. And then the other says, oh, I can't hear him whistle. And then it is, I said I had taught him, not that he had learned. And this is actually the situation we sometimes face. We think we have brilliant lectures, and they are sitting in a group of intelligent students ahead of us, and, are talking, and they have the idea, oh, they are in everything. And then you go out of the classroom, and a couple of weeks, you have the next lectures, and you start, you know, uh, we have been talking about this and this and this, is there anybody who can answer this question? Yeah, the question uh, <laughs> So this is, uh, I said I have taught him, but uh, not that he has really learned. So assessment counts. And not, not only this, this is also the competence we want to reach for the students, that they not only consume what you are presenting, that they are working on it to be able to, uh, to talk about. 
So what is problem-based learning? We start with the problem, we use defined steps. This is an interactive method. You know the traditional way of teaching is what we call frontal teaching. I am talking and you are listening. I may be able to ask some questions at the end. Maybe somebody uh, asks a question, sometimes nobody asks a question. I go home and everybody is probably satisfied or not satisfied. So this PBL is an interactive. And what is very important can only be very fruitful and effective if you have small groups. And this should guide to what we call self-directed learning. The students need to take responsibility for their learning. So it's just only to get your interactive here. Guess how many publications about PBL are in the international literature? So on the database, for example, PubMed. What would you guess? Just give me a number. Thousands. Oh, not really. Come on. Be realistic. <laughs> but PBL, I'm not talking about the entire medical literature, <laughs> and which is published in PubMed. Yeah, hundreds. Actually, this is some old, but this was less than roughly 2,300 publications and 189, which were listed in PubMed. So they are already in higher range. But this indicates usually when we ask our lecturers, they say, oh, maybe 20 or 50. And so, no, it's really quite a bit of uh, good publication of this issue. So, before you start this, you have to do prior consideration. It requires a lot of preparation before you can have your first session. You need to introduce your students to the format, the new teaching format, the learning format. Does anybody have experience in PBL? We need to train our teachers, our professors and lecturers. Because without this training, it will not work. We need to have, let's say, with the student, a kind of contract. That means the students should feel responsible that they talk to each other, that they develop this case, and that they do not wait until the lecturer will tell them anything. And we have to have a certain agreement on PBL stuff. But before we have the first session, besides training of the tutors, we need to have the facilities. And this is not so easy. If you have to split up 300 students in small groups of 8 to 10, you need a tremendous amount of rooms. And this is really a, a problem. So at, at the uh, beginning of the student year, there's a kind of competition for the rooms. And then we have to adjust the, 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 the program to this, that everybody is able to have a problem based learning. And you have to provide a lot of teachers. So if it comes now, to, and now I go through quickly to, through the steps. The first step would be to clarify terms. For example, and those who are in pediatrics, they may know it, a nine years old boy presents uh, you with obstructive pulmonary disease, with fever, headache, and nausea. He has a meningitis. This is everything the student gets as an information. And then you say, start off. So you have to think what is associated with kind of symptoms, how does it fit. Of course, it's in the pediatric class now. And so you ask first, is there any terminology unclear? Because it should not finish, be finished because they don't understand it in terms of medical terminology. Then you have to define the problem. So this could be explanatory. Why is there a meningism or something other symptoms? What is the molecular, what is the clinical background for this? But at the same time, we want to train these young students to be uh, a doctor to be to feel like they would be in the office somebody steps in and shows certain symptoms so they need an immediate reaction <coughs> especially if they're in intensive care unit. so what should we do next to handle this case then comes a very important part which we call brainstorming and brainstorming is that everybody can contribute with his or her ideas what could be connected to the symptoms, what do I know already from lectures, practical training, maybe I'm particularly interested in pediatrics, I've read more books. So, and then you have sitting eight to 10 people around and everybody has a good or less good idea. And this is written down in a flip chart and a, and a whiteboard and we do not comment on it. We do not say, oh, this is bad or this is excellent. We just summarize everything written down. 
And this is a period we usually take for 20, 30 minutes. We let them go. So they write down inflammation, non, nothing, in it, maybe in encephalitis, lumbar, lumbar puncture. So they, they combine everything, theory and practical approach, and so on and so on. All ideas should be included, and no discussion on the individual contribution should be started. It's not easy, also not for the students. And then from this we try to summarize and to generate a first hypothesis. So, why is something we try to ask, why did you say this, or what is the reason behind, what should be, so we ask the why, and we ask what should be next. So we distinguish already the two different fields of information. And then we we wipe out everything which appears not in agreement of the group, not very important. So then we have made we probably the first differential diagnosis on the basis of the knowledge of the students, and this may be a meningococcal meningitis, this may be a, a systemic inflammatory response syndrome, there may be other diagnoses as well, they may be right or they may be wrong. And you are sitting there as a lecturer or as a tutor, better to say and listen to them. They are not contributing. You let them go. And then you ask questions from time to time if you feel that they are not on the right track. And then the students realize that they don't know enough. They have already created a kind of network of their information, but they, they, they feel that they are coming to an edge where they can't go beyond. So they have, and then you, you tell them, please ask question what you want to learn to be able to follow this case. So to formulate learning goals. So for example, it could be I have to learn the criteria of the systemic inflammatory response syndrome, or let's say in terms of techniques for crime staining analysis, and this and this and this. So this requires quite a time, but you should not give them the learning goals. They should develop them. They should realize I don't know enough, I have to learn this and this and this and this. It should be precise. And then you define in this group who is going to present this question, what came out in your work, what you have developed uh, following this question, and that you tell them, please, you have three minutes time to present your results on this particular question, then comes the next, who presents his results or her results, and then you, you summarize everything which they have learned on their self-defined learning. And this is behind is the learning theory, which indicates that those questions you ask yourself, you are working on it much better than on questions which are asked by other persons, because you feel that there is something missing in your brain. And then after two days or three, way, three days that we turn the same group, you continue with the session. And uh, then you ask them to present it. And then you have to be very car careful. Because there are some students coming with their computer say, oh, I have prepared a PowerPoint presentation, but it will take half an hour. They say, oh, I have two hours time for a continuation of this case. It will not be possible. Others, and this may be more realistic, they come and say, I didn't have so much time, I made some little notes here which I could present. So you have to be very clear and I'll tell them how they should do it and how much effort they should put into uh, reporting. Then of course you continue discussion, you try to synthesize everything and then you continue with some more parts of the case and usually then they come to the final solution. So this is the situation we have one student who has certain ideas and knowledge in, the, in his or her brain, and you have the other one, and they have their, they combine everything, and it's surprising, it's surprising what a group of 10 students can develop in a case which you have never heard before. Much more, and even more than 10 times, which one of the students by himself uh, could develop if he would learn it by himself. So then, of course, we have to evaluate. We have to ask ourselves, was it a good case? How did we do in the group? Did we develop right? Did we present right? 
and this is okay in the discussion within the group, and then of course you as a tutor also uh, contribute to it. So this could be just a follow-up, how we do it. The first five parts would be the first, and then comes the working period, and then the finalization, and you may start with the second case, and then you continue, and so on, and so on. So this was actually quite different from our traditional lecture. So we would some, this situation we would uh, uh, maybe mention tutor-based learning. So we are talking, they are listening, they are not being included, no interaction. And what we would like to develop here is that all these guys are speaking and we are listening. And of course we are interfering from time to time, but not by telling you what is right or what is wrong, by asking questions to get them back on the track. So we need to know in our brain what is the goal. We have to have the knowledge, of course, of the method of PBL, but also of the content, of course. This is even more important. We need to know what methods and skills are uh, necessary we have to follow the process, we have to take care for the atmosphere, of the relaxed atmosphere, and you may probably remember from one of the first pictures, some, if, if it allows, we sit at the table and we have sometimes something to drink, so this is a nice uh, relaxed atmosphere which we cannot do every time. And uh, so we have a kind of what we call a lot preparedness. So we are just sitting, listening, but we are very uh, alert to interfere if it is possible, but to stay away and let the group work if they are working. This is very different from our traditional. So we have, it's considered we have from the instruction, we have to have a very professionalization of teaching, and this needs effective didactic methods, reflection on our role as a teacher, and adjustment also of materials. And materials count, of course. We need to have a good case. Most often we have a case, a written case, which needs to be developed over the time, which needs to be assessed by your colleagues, you have to rotate it, and you should write a kind of textbook, what to consider if you follow with your group this case on the next year. This requires quite a time, and uh, we have meanwhile built up 50 or 60 cases, which are also uh, uh, interchanged with other, uh, other uh, institutions uh, of medical uh, schools of Germany, so this is working in my very good. I have not, I should also admit some of the disadvantages I mentioned already, the requirement of many, many tutors, of many rooms, of <coughs> much time, it also for some person, students who are not really uh, uh, acquainted with the method, they consider it as a burden because they have to learn and they have to present, and uh, actually it means really good cases, Sometimes you feel you have a case taken from your colleague and the students are not really going well and they are not satisfied, you are not satisfied. You have to work on these cases. So PDL means, in the summary, activity in the learning process, self-responsibility. This is something, self-responsibility for learning, this is very important. Apply and transfer knowledge, strategies in problem-based solving, feedback, communication skills, everything should be included and is really included in this kind of teaching format which is not possible in other teaching formats. And maybe you also have some fun out of the time. It's not fun in the beginning because you are insecure, the students don't know where to go. You need really to get into practice with it and you get relaxed. The student gets relaxed and they change their role, <coughs> you change your role. <coughs> Coming to this application sheet, very often Still today, we get a response from the students' evaluation to say, listen, this professor, this lecturer, he is not skilled in PPL. You should train him. So then we have to contact him and say, please go to the training meeting, but to do that. Okay, so this was just a brief overview. And now, about the uh, uh, reporting, the stage of reporting. Uh, yani for us here, I thought it worked better for us at least, that you don't distribute the tasks 
uh, between the students because what they do usually is they depend, they rely 100% uh, on each other and they don't study.